In the ever-evolving realm of space exploration, SpaceX has brought about monumental changes, reshaping an industry once thought to be at the very top of technological challenges. The phrase, it's not rocket science, is often used to imply that something isn't that complicated. But in a twist of irony, SpaceX has consistently pushed the boundaries of what we understand as the complexity of actual rocket science. When Musk started SpaceX, many viewed it as just a billionaire's ambitious dream. They questioned whether the private sector could really compete with established government space agencies. But Musk's vision was transformative and far-reaching. As SpaceX began to make waves, other private companies followed suit. Among these was Blue Origin, backed by Amazon's Jeff Bezos. There was significant buzz about their new Glenn rocket being a strong competitor to SpaceX's Starship. However, despite earlier promises of a 2020 launch, New Glenn is still awaiting its maiden flight, while the Starship prepares for its second takeoff. A standout aspect of SpaceX's strategy is their commitment to producing almost all their parts in-house. Instead of outsourcing complex components like rocket engines from seasoned aerospace giants like Boeing, SpaceX took the reins. This in-house approach allowed them better control, not just in design and costs, but also in speeding up production. Just four months ago, SpaceX unveiled the Raptor 3 engine, hailed as the most potent of its time. Now, with the introduction of their latest engine for the Starship Human Landing System, SpaceX is poised to revolutionize space exploration once again. Recent footage unveiled by NASA provides an in-depth look into the Raptor tests conducted at SpaceX's McGregor facility in Texas. These tests are not just routine checks, but are absolutely essential to validate that the engine can function optimally in the harsh conditions of outer space. One notable test was the cold start demonstration. For this, the Raptor vacuum engine was not merely started cold, but was meticulously pre-chilled, replicating the exact thermal conditions it would encounter when making a landing on the moon. This is paramount because materials in space can behave unexpectedly under extreme cold. Metals can freeze or evaporate, and electronic components can malfunction. Understanding how the Raptor engine behaves under such conditions helps in foreseeing potential issues and addressing them proactively. Another critical test simulated a descent burn towards the lunar surface, which requires precise control and adaptability from the engine. The Artemis missions come with their own set of unique challenges, setting them apart from standard low-Earth orbit missions. A big challenge is when lunar landers sit still on the moon for a long time, waiting for the trip back home. During this phase, materials used in the construction of the lander and its integral parts can undergo significant stress. Thermal expansion and contraction can lead to structural vulnerabilities. For SpaceX, this poses unique challenges in material selection. The recent Raptor test, with its impressive duration of 281 seconds, also highlighted the engine's adeptness in adjusting its power level over extended periods. When we compare rocket engines, SpaceX's Raptor and NASA's RS-25 are often in the spotlight. NASA's RS-25 runs on liquid hydrogen and liquid oxygen, similar to how some cars use gasoline. It's quite powerful, producing a force equal to lifting 500,000 pounds, which is like lifting about 83 full-grown African elephants all at once. On the other hand, SpaceX's Raptor is a bit different. It uses methane and liquid oxygen, which is like using a more compact kind of fuel. This choice lets rockets be more space efficient. For perspective, remember the famous Saturn V rocket that took astronauts to the moon? Its engines, known as the F-1, were giant and consumed kerosene and liquid oxygen. They were groundbreaking for their era, but modern engines like the Raptor have evolved and offer various advantages. Musk, known for his cryptic tweets, celebrated a significant achievement with the global community through his moon soon message. While this tweet garnered immense attention, many enthusiasts interpreted it as a hint towards the imminent second Starship launch. In recent weeks, there has been significant buzz about this event. The anticipation peaked last week during what was deemed the launch window, spanning from 8th to the 13th of September. However, the Federal Aviation Administration, or FAA, announced that SpaceX needed to clear around 63 prerequisites before this launch. Days later, the FAA suggested the next month could likely witness the Starship's second liftoff. But the excitement was cut short when the FAA decided to withhold the launch license. 
This led SpaceX in a surprising move to de-stack the Starship from its booster yesterday morning. Many are speculating that this was in response to concerns about the flight termination system, which the FAA had emphasized. However, there could be many other reasons. They might be checking the rocket parts, ensuring the main rocket and its booster stick together correctly, or addressing feedback from authorities. Since the FAA's announcement, industry experts have closely monitored SpaceX's advancements, signaling a sense of optimism. They highlight that SpaceX is progressively nearing the next orbital flight test for the eagerly awaited Starship. Yet the hurdle of obtaining the official launch license persists. Interestingly, the FAA's launch license seems to be getting more attention than the rocket itself. Many within the space enthusiast community have voiced their concerns, even frustrations, about the FAA's strict regulations. The agency hinted that they might grant a launch license for the rocket as early as next month. However, even with the FAA's go-ahead, SpaceX will have another regulatory hurdle to clear. They would need a separate environmental approval from the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service before a launch. It's not clear how long this process might take. Since the first Starship launch in spring, the SpaceX team has been nothing short of amazing. After witnessing the challenges of the April 20th launch, many of us honestly believed SpaceX would need at least a year before trying again. However, here we are, witnessing their achievements. They haven't just repaired the damages, but have also introduced new and more reliable systems to both the launch pad and the rocket itself. A particularly important enhancement is the water deluge system, situated at the base of the orbital launch mount. This system has been specifically designed to minimize the kind of damage seen during the first launch. Additionally, the SpaceX engineers have added a hot staging ring to the top of the Super Heavy booster. This thoughtful change is meant to improve how the rocket's first and second stages separate during its climb into space. However, SpaceX's rapid progress has also astonished many, including the largest space agency in the United States, NASA. Previously, NASA had voiced concerns regarding potential delays in the Artemis program due to the perceived unreliability of SpaceX's Starship, following an explosion incident in April. While NASA proudly showcased the addition of SLS rockets' engines, the achievements of SpaceX's Raptor engine were met with a quieter reaction. So how far away do you think we are from the second Starship launch? Let me know in the comments. If you enjoyed watching this video and found it useful, make sure to subscribe to our channel for more updates. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.